Okay, good morning, everyone. It's kind of a very, very bright light. I'm trying to see, make some eye contact here. Uh, how was uh, yesterday? Yesterday went well? I heard a really, lot of really good uh, uh, sessions. Unfortunately, I couldn't make it. I was traveling. I came pretty late last night uh, from uh, a conference I, I was attending. Uh, I am really you know, pretty excited and looking forward to this conversation. Um, as Mark mentioned, uh, Mark, thank you for the very kind introduction. Uh, my focus today is to really just to talk about why and uh, before that, let me just uh, take a few minutes and share a uh, little bit about myself and uh, what we do at uh, GM Financial, um, and we will go from there. If you can sw switch to slides. Okay, a little bit about myself. Uh, I had an awesome opportuni uh, um, opportunity to lead an amazing group of people uh, at the GM Financial focused on uh, North America. Uh, I come from, as, I, um, as Mark mentioned, a uh, lot of a technology background. Uh, before, that, before joining GM Financial, uh, my, my responsibility at GM Financial is uh, North America technology. Uh, have responsibility, everything from origination, onboarding, servicing. Uh, we have a special uh, products we sell. Uh, our focus is primarily on customers, dealers, and also employees. Uh, before uh, GM Financial, uh, I spent uh, a tour of duty at uh, Silicon Valley Bank uh, running uh, a chunk of uh, commercial bank uh, technology. Uh, before that, I was running payments modernization for uh, JP Morgan Chase here at Plano. Uh, I was running small business card segment for Capital One and a uh, number of other um, work I have done uh, during my consulting days. So uh, outside of uh, work, uh, married uh, two boys, 17 and 11. So unfortunately, my wife put both of them in uh, Taekwondo. Both of them are black belt. So I am. At any given point of time between these two boys, I'm uh, mediating between uh, who's going to kick whom. So it's a very challenging, but luckily, my 17-year-old, he moved, went to a uh, computer science major in, uh, he's a freshman, he joined uh, recently. So at least one out, another one I'm trying to get out of the house. So that is a little bit about myself. Uh, so let me just start before getting into the value of DevOps, value of engineering. Uh, I just wonder how many of you here know Occam Racer? Okay, a few hands. Uh, Occam Racer is uh, it's a problem solving mechanism or principle named after William of Occam. Uh, as, as it says, the other other things being equal, simpler explanations are generally better than more complex ones. So we all in technology trying to do problem solving. Uh, we come up with a different hypothesis. Uh, how do we really just uh, try to solve these problems in a, in a very simple explanation? Uh, uh, creates some of these, illuminates some of these uh, improbable and unnecessary explanation. So, my role uh, at the GMF and a lot of the technology leaders, how do we get to the answer in a most probable manner? That's very, very important. Uh, sometimes uh, simple things can be quite complex as well, so we have to really uh, navigate that. So just to give a kind of a quick example, if you hear a oof beat, the simpler explanation would be it is a horse, not a unicorn. I, I was told that many of you here are really just to believe in unicorns. Uh, I do too. <laughs> but uh, sometimes a simpler explanation is uh, you know, probably better. So you're going to find that theme throughout my presentation. Uh, what are the kind of a simple explanation? How do we approach problems? 
what is the kind of a value and, uh, and what is the kind of a future uh, we are seeing. So there are a couple of uh, engineering habits I, you know, I just want to quickly talk about. Uh, the, a lot of things you are going to see in my presentation, it is going to be the, you know, talking about the simpler things. Uh, our, my, my team sometimes say it is boring and very obvious things. Sometimes common sense is not very common. Uh, so we are going to talk about you know, some of that. But the key thing is how do we do them in consistently? Uh, that is very important, and we are going to talk about the consistency uh, across the board. Okay, now you are doing this with the one engineer, one team, and how are you going to really just do that at scale? Um, if, you know, scale breaks everything. But how do you do this consistently at scale, the organization size and scale of, the companies I have worked in, you know, large financial institution, or here at GMF. How do we do the simple things consistently, day after day, uh, month after month, year after year? That's how we are going to build the proper engineering discipline and engineering muscle. And I'm going to really talk about how the DevOps culture is really just going to promote that. And then the last piece, we are all techies. We try to do a lot of different things. And how do we do things in a most, do in a way that it may creates an attributable impact to our business? So that is, uh, that is very important. I was talking to my 17-year-old, and I, I told him, I'm going to talk about the simpler, boring, obvious things. And he said, really? You are going to go stand in front of uh, top engineering uh, you know, talent in DFW area in a convention speech or a conference speech, and you're going to talk about all the boring things. Uh, how are they going to you know, take it? You, know, you don't have anything grandly inspirational. How are you going to really just uh, you know, uh, any kind of a viral clips for what you're going to talk about? So, Obviously not. Uh, so we are going to talk. We are going to keep it for basic, and uh, really just uh, how these things are really be impactful. Okay. So uh, we are going to talk about the value drivers. Uh, I, I, I have a case study from my past, and I just want to share how these practices really turn into kind of a business outcomes, and briefly talk about the future of DevOps. Uh, what I see. Um, where uh, we as an organization looking into things uh, to really just to mature our practices. So that is the primary objective. So let me just to get into, when I have a conversation with my business partners, what are the things uh, business is looking for a large technology organization uh, like uh, uh, the GMF uh, IT? Uh, they are looking into, I, I try to simplify that, are looking a lot of different things. But I try to simplify that our four major areas, uh, they all see technology play a vital role here. Uh, help us grow our business. Uh, we are uh, we, kind of a mission focused, they're trying to help our customers. How do we help our business grow in various things we are doing? The second thing uh, they are asking for, how are we going to provide operational efficiency and provide a scale for the business, scale for not only the applications we run, scale to grow our business, different markets, uh, how, how technology can provide that. The next thing they are asking for is a customer experience. How can we bring the best experience, net promoter score for uh, the interactions we are providing for our customers? The last thing they are asking is how are we reducing our risk? operational risk. I, I'm going to briefly touch upon it and then come back to how uh, our engineering practices are powering that. As many of you know, GM Financial is in auto finance uh, business. We are a captive for uh, General Motor. We have a multiple products. We help with the leasing products, loan product. Uh, we try to do for retail. We try to do for commercial. We try here at US, Canada, multiple geographies uh, internationally. 
So it's a very, very complex ecosystem where we can help uh, using technology, how can we really launch new products, uh, not only focus on our end customers, we have a dealer customers, we have employees. So how can we provide a better technology capabilities to really help and grow? Uh, how do we create a scalable infrastructure to really just meet all our needs? The other thing uh, business is also looking for, uh, a lot of times we, are, we try to go to market with a set of hypotheses. Sometimes it is true, sometimes it is not. We change our business model on a frequent basis. So how do we really collect the data and try to provide uh, a better business decisions uh, leveraging data? Uh, that is really just to accelerate our growth. At the end of the day, how do we make an attributable in, uh, impact towards revenue and cost? That is on the kind of a business uh, growth. Uh, many of you already know, I'm not going to drain this slide, uh, but uh, technology is in the business of providing scale. If you, are, if you are taking your product from zero to one, you can probably just uh, hire some operational folks and try to go do it. One to 10, 10 to 100, and millions, and hundreds of millions, technology is the foundation to really just to reduce the unit cost of that experience uh, to really just be manageable. It provides that kind of a scale, and also it reduces the cost to go to market. So a lot of the things we are focusing on is to make sure that we provide that operational efficiency for our business. So that is extremely important. The other thing, most of our product, either it is a lending product, I'm in financial servicing for quite a long time, a lot of our products are digital product. That the person who is really just connecting with our customer Believe it or not, it is not like a bunch of salespeople or some operational people. This is many of you here and a lot of our employees, those who are writing the code, that is the one truly a customer facing, either through the digital product or self-service products, all of that. So how can we really provide much more personalized and engaging experience for our customers? That's very important. Uh, and then again, provide data to create that kind of insight and great experience because people remember those. So technology is definitely in the front and center of it. And then the last part, how can we reduce the risk? How can we reduce the human risk? How can we take care of any technology we are implementing? We are taking safeguarding customer data, client data. Um, last time I checked, we are a highly regulated industry. So making sure that we have a compliance and all, all the kind of a risk uh, reduction is kind of a very important. So I, I'm trying to really just to paint the picture of why what we, all the things we are doing and what is the relevancy in a broader business um, needs because we are operating within the scope of that uh, our needs. So. To really just to look at all of this and how technology can deliver all these capabilities. Um, there are four major areas uh, I think about. Um, how can we really just to deliver new functions and products faster? Speed to market is extremely essential. Uh, and then if any platform we are running, how can we make sure that it is up and running all the time? How can we run these platforms in a most cost-effective manner. And then the last part is how do we recruit and retain the top talent. A lot of times, we, you know, many of us on day-to-day -day activity, and there are so many things coming, it become extremely challenging. I try to take this in a kind of a very longer view, you know, five years from now, 10 years from now, what is true? 20 years from now, what is true? Because the long-term view of thinking about IT strategy and how we can really just take this into kind of a next level. So I can imagine a scenario 10 years from now, yeah, my business leaders come and say, Raj, you guys do an amazing job. You try to deliver all these functions and products faster 
can you please slow down and do take months and years to deliver this new feature? I can't imagine that scenario. Or, yeah, another business executive come and say, you guys are doing a phenomenal job giving four nines, five nines. Can you make your platform a little bit more error prone and have a more downtime? That's not going to happen. Or this cost you know, very you know, inexpensive. Can you really just add up a little bit more money and make it expensive for us? Not going to happen, right? So this is what I would suggest. You know, take a kind of a longer view. What is true 10 years from now, 20 years from now? And really just to work backward of anything you do on the technology, DevOps, SRE, uh, all the different capabilities, uh, data, all these capabilities take a kind of a long, long view so that those are all stable. They are not going to really just, uh, you know, this year we are talking about Gen AI, you know, we, we are talking about other things. Uh, but if you take a kind of a long view, it provides a stability for you to really just do the things what you want to do. It is a, you every single day come to work in a flywheel effect, right? Just to go and do the things really just moving because these are the things that are very, very stable. If you really just look at this, uh, to deliver all the things I have talked about, the business value, how technology can really just go and uh, be agile and nimble, there is a only one way you can really just go and address many of it, uh, that is our uh, you know, DevOps and best engineering practices. Without these things, we can really just accomplish any of this. If you think about, uh, you can really just go and hire. The first time, you know, I, I interview a lot of engineers, and sometimes they, many times they ask the question, can you talk about what is the developer experience going to look like? Uh, if you don't operate in cloud, if you don't have a right pipeline, I don't know whether I want to join you, <laughs> right? So that is, that, that is very important on the recruit and retain talent, how do we go and push more, more functions and features? So we are going to talk about you know, some of this here, right? So here at GMF, uh, we try to anchor our DevOps practices to really just to focus on these four major building blocks. Like how do we think about pushing code into production uh, much more faster? Go and build, make sure that we are continuously integrating and testing so that we are not catching these bugs you know, pretty late in the game. Uh, we have been investing a lot of time and energy on how do we create a pattern build so that we are not dealing with a lot of different variations. Uh, we invested quite a bit of time on our developer portal type of capabilities. Anybody with, we have thousands and thousands of engineers building out software. Uh, the, the, the speed to market is, instead of really trying to recreate everything from brand new, you want to really just to try to understand what are the things we already build, leverage, reuse. So th those are all very, very important for our speed to market agenda. Uh, the, the same thing for, with respect to operational excellence, continuous testing, software quality, how do we make sure that we build in monitoring, all of that uh, as part of our software so we don't need to wake up in the middle of the night on, uh, with all the production issues. Uh, customer experience, risk reduction, you can see on and on, everything is tried to, uh, based on our engineering practices, all the things I have talked about, what business is asking for, what is technology strategy is, it is based on uh, our a standard pipeline in which we can move the code into production. Uh, there are a few things I just want to highlight. Uh, you know, the, our uh, journey, what we have, we have, uh, we have done. Uh, how do we think about building software in the kind of a right way? Uh, how do we, how do we have a conversation with our business partners? Uh, how do we think about the incremental iterative development? Either it is Agile, Kanban, 
Not only that, it is even when we go and have a conversation, there are some of these th uh, engineering practices starts really upfront. Uh, trying to understand the functions and features in a small incremental way so that we can go and put it in production and learn from it. How do we think about the practices like a TDD? And how do we ask our uh, business partners to write requirements in a standard uh, uh, language? All of whom are really matters because I don't want to catch and solve the problem downstream. The more and more we you know, shift left, that is where uh, we are going to get a lot of leverage out of that. Um, and then try to think about automated testing. Uh, how do we really think about the quality engineering practices built in? Uh, those are the things are really just a helping our organization really just to build software uh, really fast. Again, I, I'm going to keep coming back to this. You know, we want to do them consistently across the board by every team, and we want to do at scale and size of a very, very large enterprise. That is extremely important for us. The other thing I, I'm briefly going to touch on, uh, infrastructure as code, uh, which is a very, very important agenda for us because we, we use uh, you know, Terraform and uh, some of those tools. How do uh, we use uh, uh, cloud-based deployments? Uh, we already uh, invested a significant time and energy on Azure, and we are also uh, building out a multi-cloud strategy. So how do we go and deploy uh, applications fit for purpose? Not every application going to run on every cloud. If this is a right tool, I know how do we really just go deploy? I think that's where the Terraform-based infrastructure as a code and trying to uh, support multiple cl multi-cloud strategy, that is going to be extremely essential for us. Uh, again, here we want to create a pattern-based build. We don't, we don't want to create, we don't want to uh, uh, increase a lot of different variations. As you all know, we are a well-regulated financial industry. Uh, we, all the companies I have worked in past, uh, security and data protection, encryption, all things, these things matter. Just to think about a lot of times we have a very challenging, okay, I need to go and get, you know, put this code into production. All of a sudden my security team saying, wait a minute, uh, what are you, how are you doing, um, you know, your encryption? You know, how, how, where are you doing a kind of a key management? What, what are you doing with your certificates? What data you are doing? Are you doing, um, uh, how are you logging, monitoring? Are you handling the sensitive data in the right way? If you have applications, so like a thousands and thousands of applications, every single application in a different uh, architecture, different tools, uh, different infrastructure, it become extremely challenging for our security partners. So the way in which we are trying to solve that is uh, how do we create a set of patterns? We really just uh, make sure that this is a foolproof and if everybody is using that pattern, then all these security rules, all these policy as code has been already been built in so that they can go faster. Uh, we, want, we are partnering with our security team to make sure uh, all of them is kind of a pre-build. So engineers can really just think about a push button deployment, uh, you know, go, you know, do the testing, continuously testing, continuously release code uh, so that if the good, uh, DevOps practices are also helping our, uh, you know, security practices. That's the reason, you know, kind of a DevSecOps is the kind of a, a, a thoughts, we, you know, we engaged in for most of our uh, code and pipelines. Continuously, again, uh, you can do a lot of different things. Cont how do we continuously release your code um, very, very frequently. Obviously, many of these uh, large companies have, you know, if you think about uh, one of the largest online retailer, they deliver code 125,000 times uh, per day. Uh, but uh, obviously, we are much more regulated. We have to take care of a lot of different things. But we are going into this journey of how do we release code much more frequent in, into production. 
Uh, how, uh, so I'm all, you know, in a very short duration, we have made a significant progress. You know, it is not like, uh, at least in the la this year, uh, our teams have delivered code almost uh, 10 times uh, in a given day. Uh, a a again, this is a kind of a journey. In the last couple of years, we, you know, we have, um, we have improved our frequency in which we are trying to you know, push code into production. All of this is possible without, um, not possible without a proper pipeline, proper uh, you know, automated testing, proper release management practices, uh, you know, a proper you know, blue-green deployment, canary deployments, all of that, that is all kind of a built-in feature flex. We are a big believer in how do you deploy uh, new functions and feature in production and turn on when the business needs it because we don't want to coordinate, we don't want to do a massive, huge releases um, with a lot of impact. How do we push it in with the feature flags? That is very important for our company. Uh, again, uh, we, we have already talked about uh, a, a unified pipeline. Uh, how do we really just have everybody use a one uh, pipeline template or a set of pipeline templates in a structured way? Uh, how do we, th we already talked about active, active feature flag, uh, you know, blue-green deployment and all of that. And then how do we really just inbuilt your observability patterns uh, as part of your pipeline? Uh, that is also extremely important for us. So I'm happy to report that you know, over the last couple of years, we have, we have gone through this journey and uh, standardized many of them. So 90 plus percentage of our projects started using a standard pipeline templates, which is a kind of a huge deal for companies like uh, GMF. Uh, again, uh, the next one is about the real-time monitoring and the SRE practices. Uh, we, uh, so we have invested quite a bit of time on uh, site reliability engineering. We have set up uh, capability um, um, as part of this. And then for us, pipeline is uh, one of our uh, central point where you really just uh, pro make sure that all the best engineering practices are really just built in. Uh, we want to make this like a, a very easy for engineers uh, so that uh, all your com controls, governance, releases, and all of that really just to build in. So we have engaged in this journey. We are yearly in that cycle, but we, we are seeing tremendous progress in the last, uh, last couple of months. And I am also happy to report that uh, you know, due to this, uh, especially in, you know, in, in our division, we were able to reduce the production incidents by 80%. Think about that. Uh, we as a technologist, okay, this is a, you know, MTTR, you know, how much you know, incidents and all of that. But I always talk to my team about it is not, it is not about you know, the incidents. It is somebody, a single mom sitting in a dealership trying to get her first GM car and they say, hey, we have some issues. You know, we, we, there is a human impact to these incidents. So how do we create the kind of a best practices so that we can reduce incidents and uh, make uh, tremendous progress on customer experience? So these practices, what, what I'm talking about, this is uh, making attributable impact at scale of our customer experience. The other part I want to talk about, the cost. Uh, how do we, uh, especially when it comes to uh, operating our platforms at the kind of a right cost, um, cloud, some cloud and Gen AI and other things, if you don't use them right, it could be very expensive. Uh, because I have a horror stories from my past uh, my finance team alerted, Raj, do you know there is somebody in your uh, team ran a 64,000 job last night? Uh, because cloud, anybody, you know, they pick a wrong 
uh, you know, uh, uh, CPU type or picked a wrong storage or something kept running, you know, for a while. So how do we really just to make sure that uh, you leverage uh, your pipeline, observability, alerting, monitoring, not only your system health and also the financial health of the application. That is extremely important. So the you know, cloud of FinOps is another foundational capability for us. Uh, how do we make sure that you are using a right service at the right capacity, of course, for the right time, uh, at the right cost? That is uh, extremely essential. So that uh, our engineers and our designers, when they just go and do this, they are picking up the right cloud service and if you are a develop, if you are running a development, and uh, if you are not doing after you know 6 p.m., go shut them down. Uh, you have a proper alerts and reporting so that we can learn continuously learn how how much cost we are spending for these cloud services. And we are also looking at some strategic bulk buy so that we can get the per unit cost reduced. So this is again like a, like a you know. DevOps, it is, not, it is a practice. It is a collaboration between our finance group, operation group, engineering group, infrastructure group, and to make sure that we can deliver at the right cost. Again, here, uh, I'm happy to report with the help of Mark and his team, uh, we partnered quite, quite a bit. We have reduced a very significant our cloud cost, at, at least the areas where we want to reduce uh, employing kind of a cloud of FinOps since last year. So this is again a continuous journey. Every single, it's like a, a flywheel effect. They go and do something, try to learn. Okay, we did something wrong. Okay, let's reverse back. So how, how do we continuously improve on all these best engineering practices to deliver software at the right cost um, of, at the right time? So I, I want to pull all of them together. This is from my past experience. I just want to share uh, I, when I was uh, in one of the bank, um, we wanted to go and um, launch a lending product uh, for the commercial customers. Uh, initially, my business partners were looking for, okay, should we just go and buy this company? Or should we go and buy uh, this software? Oh, the, oh, this is going to cost like a $70 million, $50 million. We went and looked at a lot of different things. And we said, why don't we really just go build up, ground up, leverage a lot of the things we already have, and really just to give the keys to the engineers, really just to do them in a right way, go build uh, leveraging all the assets we have, and we want to do them in a very, very fast pace. So, it was like a multiple years ago when I was sitting with uh, my business partners and say, we can go build it. We, we have a right engineering practices to really just to pull this off. Nobody believed it. Nobody believed it. So, but we took the ch a challenge and uh, we said, okay, you are spending uh, next to three, four months on all these different joint ventures and software companies you are trying to do. What if, if we go and build this product in, at the time I said 90 days, uh, if we can go, it's gonna take this much time for you to go do all of it. Give us a 90 days and we will go build the MVP and try to launch it into the market and we will go and see how it goes. Okay, they said, okay, we will continue to go and engage in other conversations, but why don't you guys go and uh, try to create a prototype? So we set up a right team. Uh, again, this is all the right engineering practices. We, we said the only way we can, because this is a new product you are trying to launch, and you are going to learn a lot. The only way to learn a lot is introduce new functions and features fast. How do we think about a kind of a end-to-end -end pipeline in which we can deploy new functions and features in hours? We, we start with observability. We will start with the how many clicks, how many 
uh, products being uh, people are you know looking in how you know what is the turn ratio all of that we build everything using the right engineering practices and we will learn quite a bit from that we uh, obviously we wanted uh, infrastructure which is very nimble because what works for zero to one does not you know won't work for one to hundred hundred to uh, million so how do we think about leveraging uh, our infrastructure? And how do we deploy this uh, really, really fast? Uh, so again, this is not a, like a theoretical exercise where we talk about our draw in, in pictures. This is a real life uh, where you are trying to launch a brand new product for very sophisticated customers because Customers have a lot of different choice in the marketplace. They don't need to come to us. But uh, we decided to, it took, even though we, we initially when we said 90 days, it took 120 days. We went and launched this product very successfully. And we started learning quite a bit. So before this project, we were not doing any of the digital lending for this particular commercial segment. Uh, Fast forward, in the next 12 months, we booked $100 million worth of loans. The root cause of all of this is the right engineering. Whatever the hypothesis we initially started, we found out that a lot of them are false. By the way, they went and looked at all these uh, different products and it cost hundreds of millions of dollars, and we built this kind of a small little application, which you end up delivering this much of a value in a five to six million dollar investment. Uh, the root of all of that is uh, best engineering practices, pipeline, release management, learning, observability. We anything moved, we measured. Anything more to be measured, all our initial hypotheses, uh, most of them not happen to be true because the best laid plans, the moment it reaches uh, the real customer and real uh, needs, they don't hold. So, but we were very nimble enough to really just to learn. Okay, we learned, let's go and push this and see what is the impact on customer. Okay, that worked, let's go do more of it. Uh, so, so this is not a theoretical exercise, at least for me. This is a value delivered uh, for our business, uh, which is I'm very proud of association with the amazing, amazing group of engineers um, uh, and product and agile, and it's obviously a very big team effort. Uh, very proud of that team. Uh, quickly, I want to uh, touch on a few other things uh, um, as well. Um, other thing we care about is uh, inner sourcing. Uh, how do we bring, uh, we, we, you all uh, know open sourcing, but uh, within our company, how do you really just bring everybody together? Um, software engineers, developers, tech leads, they can think uh, talk about patterns um, and build software. I think my Vision here is, from my past, I have done the similar thing with other companies. How do you create a space in which anybody can do a code contribution on any application because they find something they have uh, contributed to? Uh, especially on a financial uh, services industry, uh, not everything can be um, open sourced. So this is a kind of a forum in which we are trying to bring in all developers so that uh, we can enable teams. We already started the initial version of it. We internally, we call them Blaze, where we have our tech leads to come in and talk about different patterns and how do we think about different components. Uh, our goal and my vision is to really just to take it next level and how do we inner source um, where people can, people have a lot of ideas. They, want, they don't want to be restricted on, this is the place I am working on, uh, they, they, want, they, can, they have the ability to contribute to more stuff. So inner sourcing is also very important. That, for that, you need to have a proper governed pipeline in which 
the quality is not compromised when you are inviting others into the party. Okay, quickly I want to touch upon what is the kind of a future, at least I see, how do we re uh, reinvent our software practices? Uh, artificial intelligence. This is the area is growing leaps and bounds. Um, uh, I will briefly touch upon a few things for the interest of time. Uh, we see a lot of uh, opportunity with artificial in intelligence, Gen AI um, in software engineering and in DevOps. Uh, we already started uh, you know, engaging with the co-pilot for GitHub. Many of you probably have used it. Uh, a very big productivity improvement for us automated development processes and testing. We are a big believer in, because a lot of times when you're trying to test our application, we don't have a proper data, we can bring production data because of the controls. So how do we create a synthetic data using Gen AI so that we can improve the quality? Obviously, a lot of our models need to run on uh, data. So how do you create a kind of a test type of environments where we can create a lot of synthetic data to test our applications, train our models really well. That's other area. Obviously, Gen AI is going to come, I truly believe, it's going to transform a lot of automation, code quality, uh, and then also a lot of code gen tools. Uh, I never believed this is going to be true. The more demos and more things I have learned recently, uh, there is a quite a bit of uh, uh, code generation tools going to really just help. Either it is a you know, legacy programming language, you have only the last COBOL programmer, you have application and you are trying to transform that or modernize that. There is a quite a bit of opportunity with the Gen AI as well. So quickly touch on a few things. Uh, Copilot for uh, GitHub, this is something we started uh, implementing, we started with a pilot. Uh, this has been a phenomenal productivity tool. Uh, this is uh, going to help with uh, you know, a lot of the code assistance we are trying to, we are seeing. We are seeing a very quite a bit of a productivity improvement, reduction of errors, all of that. This is a fantastic tool we have started uh, rolling out. Uh, th this is, these are all the things going to augment the overall developer experience in my view. The other thing I briefly talked about, the synthetic data. Uh, how do you create a realistic data sets in which we can test applications, train models, uh, improve software quality? This is the another area uh, we are continuously looking at and uh, uh, get maturity on. Uh, who here likes to do a lot of documentation of the code you have ever written? There is a one soul over there, definitely want to do in documentation, but uh, again, you know, we, there is a definitely a kind of a human difference. There is uh, no, no question about it. But how can we really just get really better with, uh, you know, Gen AI, uh, related tools to get a better documentation so we can have people kind of onboard uh, quicker, especially if you have a kind of an old legacy platform. Um, you know, how do, we, how do you think about documenting them? That is, those are all uh, very important for us. Obviously, this is going to help us quite a bit with the quality uh, uh, improvements with our code. So this is uh, definitely something we are actively looking into. Uh, I briefly flashed this slide um, up to talk about there are different tools available. I, in fact, uh, yesterday I had an opportunity to talk to one of the uh, leading technology CEO. Uh, the type of tools they are working on, this is like amazing. Uh, if, if you look at, uh, a lot of this automation, automated code generation, either it is a code assist or special purpose tools or autonomous, has anybody heard of Devon? Okay, there are a few. Uh, there, there is another tool, Anna AI, you know, it is a kind of auto code generation tools. Uh, uh, and then, you know, 
there, there are a number of them. Uh, I, I think the progress in the last uh, uh, few months, this has been amazing. So these are the tools going to really kind of change the way we are going to develop software. So in conclusion, uh, as you can see, uh, my focus is why. Uh, hopefully it gives a kind of a paint a picture of how our DevOps engineering practices helping uh, with the business outcomes, uh, where and how we are improving our customer experience and the software quality. So this is not a theoretical exercise. This is making uh, impact to our business. Again, I, I will finish with this slide. Sometimes what we are trying to do is uh, maybe it is simpler, maybe it is boring, maybe it is obvious, but the key thing we as uh, software uh, engineers and leaders, how do we do them consistently? How do we do them at scale? And do it in a way it has the attributable impact for our customers or our employees. That is what matters and uh, many of us are practitioners in this craft. Uh, I love to see how you all go and make an impact on your own way. Thank you very much.